This video shows how to read out pin number two of an IO link port in addition to the data of your connected IO link sensor in an Ethernet IP network. This means that IO link data and an additional binary signal, such as from a limit switch or proximity sensor, can be read in via a so called A port of an IO link master. Let's first take a look at the hardware. If you want to read in an additional binary signal via an IO link port, there is one point you should pay attention to, depending on the master used. Therefore, an AL112, zero standard line master, and an AL1422 performance line master are used in this configuration to show the two possible variants. The masters are connected to a compact Logix L, 18ER PLC with Ethernet IP interface. As shown, two sensors are connected to one port each. Before using the software, we check the pin assignment of the I.O. link ports of the two masters. A pressure sensor PN7094 with I.O. link interface and an inductive proximity switch IGS290 for the binary signal are connected to port 1 of the 4-port master AL1120 via a Y splitter. We go to the IFM homepage and navigate to the AL1120 Zero four port master online data sheet. Under wiring, you will see the pin assignment of the individual ports. All IO link ports are so called A ports. A suitable Y splitter is used to read in an additional binary signal, but wiring via terminal blocks or similar is also common. Both sensors are supplied via pin 1 and 3 of the IO link port. Pin 4 of the I.O. link pressure sensor is connected to pin 4 of the A port of the I.O. link master. In addition, the switching signal of an inductive sensor, which is also output via pin 4, is connected to pin 2 of the same port. The next step is to check the pin assignment of the other master. Again, navigate via the IFM homepage to Wiring in the AL1422 online datasheet. The available I.O. link ports are organized in two groups of four ports each. Ports 1 to 4 are so-called B ports and ports 5 to 8 are A ports. The black colored B ports use pin 1 and 3 for the supply voltage of the sensor and pin 4 for the I.O. link signal, just like an A port. It is also possible to use pin 4 as a digital input or output if no I.O. link signal is used. A B port also allows separate power supply of actuators via pin 2 and 5, or use of pin 2 as a digital output. For this reason, port 5 is used to connect the sensors. As in the previous example, we use a Y splitter to connect the I.O. link signal from the SA5000 flow sensor to pin 4 of the A port. We also use an IGS-291 inductive sensor for the digital switching signal and connect it to pin 2 of port number 5. Let's take a look at this configuration in Rockwell Studio 5000 programming software. As already mentioned, this video shows how to read pin number 2 of an I.O. link port. If you have further questions about the communication settings, the data structure of an I.O. link sensor, or the necessary programming steps. Please watch the corresponding I.O. link integration video. We go back to the IFM homepage and select the download area for the four port master. Open the operating instructions and search for the term pin two using the search function. We quickly find the information that the additional digital input is stored in the first two bytes of the input assembly of instance 100. If we scroll up, we see that the user can choose between different instances for the cyclic input and output data of the master. For example, if no diagnostic data is required, selecting instance 101 can save memory space. We will therefore also look at instances 101 and 102. As can be seen from both input assemblies, the information of the additional digital signal of pin 2 
can always be found in the first two bytes, regardless of the selected instance. The mapping shows that in our case, the switching signal is stored in the first bit of the second byte. Studio 5000 programming software, we navigate to controller tags and select the input assembly of our standard line master. We then go to data zero, which contains the first two bytes of the input assembly. Data 0.8 is the first bit of the second byte. For test purposes, we damp the inductive sensor and see how the status of the bit changes. To compare the two masters, we proceed as before. We go to the IFM homepage and navigate to the download area to open the operating instructions for the AL1422 performance line master. Using the search function for pin 2, it takes us to the input assembly of instance 100. Again, the information for the additional digital input is stored in the second byte here. The difference is that port 1 to 4 cannot be used as they are B ports. Therefore, we find our digital signal from port 5, an A port, in bit 4 of the second byte. Different instances can be chosen here too, but as you can see, the way the information is read out remains the same. In the Studio 5000 programming software, we navigate again to controller tags and select the input assembly of our Powerline master. We then go to data zero, which contains the first two bytes of the input assembly. Data 0.12 is the fifth bit of the second byte. To test this, we damp the inductive sensor and see how the status of the bit changes. To summarize, we activate live view in the main routine to display both the binary and IO link signals. First, we damp the inductive sensor connected to port one of our standard line master. The binary signal stored in data 0.8 changes. We then apply pressure to the sensor connected to the same port to check that the correct value has been transferred to the software. The same procedure is followed with the performance line master and both sensors connected to port 5. The value stored in data 0.12 changes when the inductive sensor is damped. The I.O. link data is then checked by manipulating the flow value of the sensor. Even here, the values displayed on the sensor and in the software are the same. Thank you for watching.